Ooh, what's this? Ooh, a text message. Let's see here. Heat warning. <laughs> oh. Don't forget to face hard camera. Hello! Welcome again to the hobo and his girlfriend wrestling show. I just got a little text message there. It said, don't forget to face a hard camera because I guess me, like other wrestlers, actually need direction on how to perform professional wrestling. But I'm the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Um, let me get into a little bit of some programming notes. I just realized Slammiversary is this Sunday. I'm probably going to be doing a live stream event. Again, a live stream R R R show. Oh, wrong way. I just forget which way to. I don't remember kitten tails. Oh wow! I should really probably print larger next time. That's okay. So probably what's going to happen tomorrow? I have a lot to. Do. Tomorrow I'm going to be making my predictions. We're going to have a special guest. We're going to have the one, the only Doctor Tom here. He's going to do a very special predic predictions, as he likes to say. First time anniversary because I actually wrote down the card. I think they're going to have one more. So again, I have my notes all over the place. Those will go in the notebook eventually. Or be just sticky note there. That's okay. I can do that when I come home and after the video process. So Wednesday is going to be a predictions video for Slimeversary, which is this Sunday. And then also by Thursday, because I think I'm going to be busy, somewhat busy this weekend. I have the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League card all set. So there's going to be another video about that. Um, unfortunately, I am working Friday night. I'm working all day Friday. I don't know when I get off of work. If I can, and trust me, if I can, I will. I might not be able to do an my weekly Impact R R R show. Making money takes precedence until I get monetized. And I think I only work there, work at this one place like a couple times a month. Not too bad. Saturday work, but then and then I don't know about Sunday. I signed up to work Sunday. We'll have to see what the boss, what the bosses say, or or what, however that goes. Um, so that's a little bit about what's going on. This week, the next week, again, starting Sunday, it's going to be uh, Slammiversary, Raw, SmackDown, Impact, and then another R&R &R &R show for WWE Extreme Rules. And I'll see if I can get a little something for that. And then, so it'll be Extreme Rules Sunday. Raw Monday, SmackDown Tuesday, Impact Friday. Then Sunday. Oh, that's right. I have to think about what I'm going to do for that. 8 o'clock. I'll figure something out later. I just might take spa day. I think that's right. Spa day time. Spa week time. Um, that's Sunday the 21st. I'm probably heading off to Orlando because I'm going to go see a WWE house show. I think that's the one thing I haven't seen yet. It's a WWE house show. I've been to pay-per-view. I've obviously been to I've been to WrestleMania twice. I've never been to a house show. I had to miss the one here in Daytona Beach because of stupid boss or a scheduling conference on my previous job. And then, ooh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Why can't I just go early? Yeah, so I'll still have Raw, SmackDown. And then it becomes somewhat normal. I don't know, because then, yeah, somewhat normal. Because then I know August 3rd, I'm having my Triple Mania party. I'm going to have a party with some Frito burritos. Making those again. Again, if you want to see how I make my own Frito burritos, that's on a previous video somewhere. 
Less, less enough about silly programming stuff. Spent way too much time. Um, let's talk about some. Oh, did I? Oh, some SmackDown. This is weird because for the first time in a while, SmackDown was actually not as good as Raw. I'll qualify that by saying the wrestling matches were still, they were good. There was nothing spectacular. Way too long of an intro to the show. Way too many, way too much filler. And I know people have complained about Raw saying, yeah, you're only getting seven, you're only getting seven minutes. Seven minute match here, five minute match there, 90 second match there. The thing is, you're getting constant matches with little filler. So the thing is, you want a lot of little wrestling and very little filler, or do you want kind of a 50 50 mix of each? I'd rather have more. More shorter matches and less filler <sighs> versus a, versus a few okay matches and filler. So matches, they, again, they were good, and, and I'll get into that. So we start off SmackDown. First of all, I'm here chanting at home. I want Pyro. I want Pyro. And I will give... A shout out to Twisted Pixie. So this Jordan got back goes out to you. Oh my God, Becky, look at her butt. Wow. I like big butts and I cannot lie. And the reason why I gave a shout out to Twisted Pixie is because she has realized what I have known for a while, and that is that. I don't like Texas. There was always something about Texas that, that said, Hobo Tom, stay away from Texas. She's learned that the hard way. In fact, probably going to have to send her, send her lawyers, guns, and money. Thank you if you please send me lawyers, guns, and money. Thank you. Very needy. I guess I forget how the song goes, but <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I'm not feeling that creative enough to find it on final wave file because that takes too freaking long. It's been a long day, even though I took I think two little naps. Because again, I had to go see lawyers today. Lawyers, I couldn't even get all my questions asked. So I'm like, wait, are we being charged for all this? No, I'll save my silly questions for later. It starts off um, with a Braun Strowman. Well, SmackDown. Let me get back to SmackDown. Even though we want Pyro. Um, it starts off with a Braun Strowman Bobby Lashley recap. Eh, it's okay. Again, I don't like SmackDown being recap. It really wasn't recap heavy, which I guess is good. But just... A lot of filler that didn't need to be there. So it'll be interesting to see what happens on the Go Home Show next week. or ne Yeah, next Tuesday. Oh, wow. That's right. I'm going to have to go to Walmart because I have to get my stuff ready for 4th of July. Because I think 4th of July I'm going to have all-American cheesesteaks. And then I'm just going to have simple bacon, egg, and cheese sandwiches with tater tots. And then for Extreme Rules, I'll have my sausage gravy and eggs and biscuits. Ooh, sausage gravy, eggs and biscuits. That's pretty cool. I have to. I don't feel like having a big cheesesteak, though. I'd rather have two smaller ones with steak them. But I'll figure that out later. So we get to the Kevin Owens show. And he looks confused. Um, it was a very lackluster performance by Kevin Owens. Either that's the direction, or, or he's just like, it's time to mail this in. 
So he called. He, he brings out Shane McMahon and Drew McIntyre. Um, Shane, of course, man's a better entrance. It was just like, yeah, whatever. I think Kevin Owens realized what what Heyman did. Uh, uh, Paul Paul Heyman did on Raw and says so like, I am out here. Um, again, the wrestling wasn't bad. All the filler stuff for SmackDown was. Mm. Whereas on Raw, the filler was amazing. I thought there were some good bits. There were some bits so bad. It's like, Whoa, that's just terrible. At least it elicited a reaction from the fans and from the television audience, such as Hobo Tom. Uh, so then the uh, Dolph comes out and Kevin Owens starts to say, Oh, it should be you, it should be you. I don't know. That was just Kevin Owens was reading cards, and he's just like, "Yeah, whatever." Uh, Daniel Bryan, the heel, they have him backstage. He's the heel who talks the truth. Again, he he did tease students some Daniel Bryan math. I wonder if that would be the same as wrestling math, or even this complex form of math. Steiner equations. Dr. Tom will explain more about that later. But again, he's the heel who, who makes sense. Then we have a New Day promo. That was okay. Oh, and by the way, hi, Silva. Yes, I saw your sign there. I have no idea who you are, but I figure I'll say hi to you anyway. Oh, and there was also... I haven't actually watched this in a while, but there was a support... Wrestle Talk! Like, share, subscribe. Someone's wearing a support Wrestle Talk shirt. So, shout out to Ollie Davis across the pond. So, that, so that was cool. It's always nice to see kind of different stuff and see what people are wearing, unlike this, this dirty, filthy, disgusting Daytona Beach crowd. And, and only one step, maybe, above Philly fan, fat bastard, drunk. Dirty, disgusting. I digress, though. Uh, so the first match would be a Daniel Bryan versus Biggie. This was actually a pretty fun match. It's, it's again when you have two different styles of wrestler, you have the technician Daniel Bryan and kind of the brute strong person Biggie. So it's a little bit different. It was good though. Uh, Biggie again, he has those overhead belly to bellies, which is amazing. Daniel Bryan does go after the knee of the big man, which actually does make sense. I'm sorry if I'm itching my arms, but I think my, my sunburn is finally starting to heal up. And you know what happens when the sunburn heals up? You start peeling like a fish. So I think that's going to happen soon. Well, at least it'll give me something to do at work. Peel the dead skin from my arms. It's terrible. See, hobo DNA. Terrible. Uh, that's neither here nor there, though. Yeah, Daniel Bryan's morning, he goes after the, the uh, surgically repaired knees of Big E. I'm actually kind of confused. I wonder why Big E isn't wearing a knee brace. A lot of wrestlers do wear that knee brace for a little extra protection. I mean, Big E could wear a knee pad. I think even when I had my, my knee issues, when I destroyed my knee as an amateur wrestler in high school, I tore the, lead, I tore the medial collateral ligament, uh, bruised the bone, and damaged the... Medial mini um, is it the? I go with that cartilage. I know I damaged the cartilage. Medial collateral ligament. I guess it's the medial meniscus. Oh, medial meniscus. That's right. And so I damaged that. And I'll tell you what. For about, I was on an immobilizer for one month. I'm sorry, not one month, but one week. I was on a knee immobilizer. I spent another seven weeks. Yeah, seven weeks in a uniplanar brace, which just allows one range of motion, literally back and forth. The tear was not bad. It didn't necessitate surgery. Then I think for another almost three to four months, whenever I went to the gym or did anything, I always wore a knee brace just in case. Because I know I think 
like literally like week seven. Like with two days to go before my knee brace done and over with, I'm like, let me test this knee out. And I did one thing and I'm like, yeah, knee brace for a while. Um, so, hey, if he's fine, he's fine. I only have my doctorate in education. Although I do have my master's in biology. Anyone looking for a biology science teacher? Hobo Tom is your man. Actually, I'm hoping to hear back from the one teaching position. I hope. And I to hear back from the dealing with the United States postal system. And that reminds me, I have to apply for another job, too, at that school. So much stuff that I have to do before I can actually go to school. Wow. But again, this was a fun match. Um, eventually, Rowan, the referee gets distracted. Biggie winds up outside. He crushes Biggie into the ring post. Throws him back in. Xavier Woods tried to take out Rowan. Not happening. Rowan's way too big. So Daniel Bryan wins after hitting the knee plus in the middle of the ring. Pins Biggie for the one, two, three. No referee shenanigans for a change. This was a good cheeseburger match. Then we have R True saying about how he wants to retake the 7 Eleven European TV Championship. It was fun. Except, except for he's going to be interrupting Freak Maverick, doing things to his wife, having cordial relations with his wife 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for a whole week. Um, then uh, Nikki Cross is there, and she's with. Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross was told that she's actually going to host a moment of bliss. So this is pretty good. It's different. Uh, the way she jumps in that chair just makes Nikki look so cute. It also makes her look, look like a little kid, which is kind of funny. She just jumps up. She seems way too happy. By the way, like 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 cocaine. Pile of coke. Happy. 80s pile of coke. Happy. I'm just saying. Although, probably not on it, but you never know. She was way too happy, though. Um, so she, she interviews uh, her guest is Bailey. And and Bailey is terrible. Uh, that belt looks huge on Bail on Bailey. I just be I guess because it, she normally wears it lower, but when it sits on her waist, because she's I always thought she was really skinny and lanky, like. It, go, it covers up her whole midsection and it like starts to cover up her 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 breast too. So it literally goes from can't do it here, but from like here to here on her, which on me would be freaking huge. Well, yeah, I don't know, it's still pretty big. But she's that small. Or I don't know. Bailey never did it for me. Um, then she asked, uh, she, Nikki Cross asked a question, like, well, why, why do you call Alexa Bliss a liar? It's like, like she, she's been so nice to me. And then, ding dong. This is terrible. Harkens back to, to, to terrible old Bailey. Ding dong face the hard cam. That's going to be my title. Ding dong. Face the hard camera, you hobo. Hey, right, cool. Yes, this is what happened. Here at the Hobo Production Studios, we we do stuff on the fly. Because I can't afford any interns, and my cat is, I think, in the lanai. But she's kind of my. 
and helps me along every so often. Uh, so we have Nikki Cross versus Bailey. It was okay. I mean, I like the fact that they let the wrestlers wrestle. The wrestling through the commercials, which is good. They still show the commercials and picture in picture, which I don't, I don't mind that much. I can kind of figure out what's going on where. I know. Well, that commercial's okay. I'll skip that. I'll, oh, wow, she did something pretty cool. So again, Nikki Cross is a really good wrestler. Um, a Bailey to me has always just been lanky and awkward. Uh, this match was botch free though, which is kind of cool. Which is not something you can say about a lot of Bailey matches. Uh, she still hit that Bailey to Belly, which is a terrible finisher in my head. Only because you see people do multiple belly to belly suplexes that look that have a lot more stank. Just like Big E's overhead belly to belly, that looks amazing. But the bail the belly to belly. Yeah. Uh it was a good match though. I, I can't besides the finish and the finisher, I can't complain about the match itself. Again, if it's a good match, it's a cheeseburger match. Then we had a Muhammad, Al, uh, Muhammad Ali, Mustafa Ali promo. Again, I don't know if he's going to be vigilante Ali or what, so so we'll see what happens there. And then the next thing we have, we have a Kofi Kingston and Samoa Joe kind of interview. Samoa Joe's like, we don't need any collateral damage. So, uh, what's her face stepped out of the ring? It's not Charlie. It's, it's the other one. I forget who it is. Um, oh, yeah. And then, um, oh, shoot. What's her face is in AEW now. I know she left NXT. Shoot. Now I forget her name. I think she was like the, the bell ringer girl. She wore a red dress. I know I have videos of her in NXT, so I'll take a look. Dasha. Da, da, da. Da Dasha Fuentes, I think. Or Dasha something. I know it's Dasha, though. I know it began with a D. I just couldn't figure out what it was. So, um, that's, that's a pretty straightforward promo between Kofi Kingston and Samoa Joe. Although, towards the end... Oh, first of all, Kofi Kingston, when insulting Samoa Joe, cannot hold a candle... To the way Scott Steiner used to call Joe the Samoan fat ass. Steiner insults are still best insults. Steiner math rules supreme! But then Kofi did the unfaced thing. Instead of shaking Joe's hand like Joe very politely asked and said, You know what? If you shake my hand, we're all good until Extreme Rules. That makes sense to me. So I shake your hand, you leave my guys alone? You leave my family alone? There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Joe. Instead, Kofi lets him know that he is number one. And not that number one. In his books. Yeah, that was, that was entertaining. Oh, three pages. I took some good notes for a change. Oh, I took well space notes too. Then we have a heavy machinery promo. It's a heavy machinery promo. Otis. Wow, I can't believe they let Otis say what they say on TV though. He's just funny. And uh, then we have uh, Lashley recalls Braun Strowman, a uh, 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 son, son of a bitch. And then next, and then talks about murdering, sending Braun to not the hospital. But we'll see how that goes for Extreme Rules. So that should be interesting. <laughs> Although I highly doubt if it's going to be a electrified pool match like we would see in Japan. It's not going to be one of those weird Japanese death matches. Uh -uh. It's not going to be, although the electrified pool match looked kind of pretty cool. I mean, to me, it looks fun if you, if you get power bombed into a pool. But it actually seems like fun. 
I don't know, it just might be. Maybe because I've done back bumps into a pool before. It is kind of fun. You front bumps into a pool, it's called a belly flop. I've done what? I've F5 people in. No, I've, um. Yeah, I've F5 people in pools. Suplex people in pools. Body slam people in pool. Yeah. Anything in a pool is just fun. Uh, so then we have Apollo Cruz versus Andrade Cien Almas. I have two names, people. If they're first name or given name, their surname or last name. So with this, though, there was no entrance. They just kind of started wrestling. Yeah, it was pretty good. And Andrade, very classic Andrade match. Apollo Cruz, he's just so strong. He's so athletic. He can do so many things that I couldn't even dream of doing. Um, he he does like the warrior uh, Andrade and Apollo. Again, they brawl, they beat each other up on the outside. I mean, he does Apollo's amazing the fact that he does the gorilla press to a standing moonsault, which is great. Uh, let's see here. And this was actually for the most part the match of the night. It was a very and very average raw though. Uh can't, can't. God has to be careful with that leg slap because an elbow when an elbow with this while you do that, you know what's happening. It's not bad. That was the only thing. Um then Zelina Vega hit a hurricanrana which sent Apollo Crews into the table. Why Apollo Crews just can't catch her and like place her down like on top of said table after the feat of strength that he can do, he should be able to and I know there's in theory physics and mass and motion and forces involved, but still. If he can do a standing moonsault little Selena Vega who weighs all of eighty five pounds and stands four foot six. That should, that should be like. Um, that was a fun match, though. Andrade seeing Almas went over again due to the interference. He does hit the hammerlock DDT after after Apollo's kind of out of it because he got sent head first into the table by Zelina Vega. This was actually pretty good. I mean, if it wasn't for like a, like a spot, probably the leg slap, the of oh, the. Obvious leg slap and Selena Vega's interference. It wouldn't have been better, but still, overall, this was a good, fine cheeseburger match. And then there's the Dolphin KO backstage. Are they trying to be the bar? I hope not. And oh, by the way, for that Apollo Andrade match, that crowd died. I mean, they were all checking their cell phones. They, they, they were all, they were all like, I would like, I would like to see, oh, that was okay. Some firework, firework, ambulance, electroshock, send. I mean, they were just so disinterested. It was a San Antonio crowd, and San Antonio is a really laid-back city. Uh, if you ever seen like a San Antonio Spurs games, they're like the least enthusiastic crowd. They do like their sports teams, but when you see them there, they're like, "Welcome to our city." Whereas if you wear like an opponent's jersey in Philadelphia, you're, you're, you're just, oh, that's, that's, that's not no no bad. All, all, all bad. Oh, that's right. I haven't. I didn't have to do that for. <laughs> one, one day I'll, I'll let everyone in, into my little secret about the secret wager I had at work. That was funny. I'll, I'll let you guys. Well, well, I'll tell it now because I have plenty of time. Where I used to work, we had to get people's email addresses for, for stuff. And not to give out the whole email address, 
but it was um Tracy's facials at blank blank dot blank. To be a grown woman wearing what she was wearing, you do not want your name and then facial in your email address. Just go Google it. You'll see pictures that that will blow your mind. And probably legitimate business every so often, but still. So the bet at work was if you rang her up and she gave you her email address, I would get you a candy bar, which I actually had to do for for, for, for one for once. If you got a more interesting email address and there are a couple different combinations of, of letters and names that I can't even mention on YouTube because I'd be kicked off um, I would just say all the chocolate for you if you manage to get her business card an appointment it would be all the chocolate and a bottle of bourbon and you would be declared the man and i would have to say i'm not worthy I'm not worthy so that was kind of funny again stay classy out there daytona beach bum tona beach boo bum tona beach and then we have uh dolphin ko again then trying to be the bar yeah that was magic bottle and I think Mick Foley kind of did that a lot, too. Then we have Aleister Black. He's going to have a match at Extreme Rules. I don't know who it'll be. I hope it's either Shelton Benjamin, who is acting creepy, Ray Wyatt, or it could be Matt or Jeff Hardy, too. And the Woken! Universe, yes. So I don't know. You started to talk about like the seven hells, and of course Matt Hardy's reference to the, the nine deities. Yes. And I know I haven't watched it. I haven't watched it close enough, but I, I wonder if there was any um, puppets out there. So no. Mercy the buzzard was in the background with the Miz on Raw. I don't think I saw any other puppets unless I missed it during the Ember Moon walk to the gorilla position area. I don't know. So then we get to our next match. We have Ember Moon versus Mandy Rose. Oh, I was shocked. Mandy Rose can wrestle. Mandy Rose has a booty, too. Although her, her boobies got smaller, though. They got, like, smushed or something. Or either, or either that or, or the black... It's just it has a slimming effect. She used to wear like all gold Mandy Rose. That was awesome. Um, so yeah, I, she Mandy Rose has, has improved in leaps and bounds since her days in NXT. She was okay. I saw her wrestle a few times. Uh, the one thing she she does, yeah. Mandy, actually, oh, that's right. Mandy did get a lot more vicious, a lot more aggressive, which is good. Um, the, that, that stacked pin, though. Oh, that, that um, yeah, that, uh, oh, wow. I don't know what to say about that stack pin she does, though. That's something you see in adult-themed videos, I think. But um, I think the only bad thing, Mandy does not know how to take how to eat an eclipse though, because she just kind of like stood there and just kind of bent over and then like flopped to her back. Whereas I think Billy Kate took it the best. Like, like she does a little flippy cutter thing from the top rope, and Billy Kate just like flopped on her chest and looked dead.
or she did a front bump, and it just looked amazing, though. Yeah. Or did she go all the way back? I can't remember the physics of it. Flips, cutter. Yeah, like Billy Kay like went straight to her back, but it was amazing though. Mandy Rose eating the clips. Not so amazing. And Sonya Deville really didn't get in that involved besides the beginning of the match. So again, this was actually was still a pretty good match overall. Another cheeseburger match. Then Sheldon Benjamin, like, did he realize that he was being interviewed? Because he was just, like, laughing. So maybe it's going to be Sheldon Benjamin versus Aleister Black. Who knows? And the next thing I'd like to say is that there's a macho man in every arena. Oh, yeah. You can find me in Daytona Beach. Yeah. You can find me in San Antonio, Texas. Yeah, I don't know when I'm going to pop up next. I might go over here. I might go over there. I might do a 360 because everyone knows that the cream always rises to the top. Yeah. There's a macho man everywhere. And so it was a new day and Daniel Bryan and Daniel Bryan running the ringside once he knew that happened. There was going to be shenanigans. Um, but the next match was Heavy Machinery versus Kevin Owens and Dolph Stigler. Dolph can't take down Otis, which is really good. Dolph tried his amateur stuff. Not, not. Listen, you're fighting out outside your weight class, Dolph. It's not gonna happen. Uh, and then there was like it was just the New Day and Daniel Bryan and Roman just yapping at each other. That was a melee outside. Like, Xavier Woods got stuck through a table. Pank he <laughs> he had a pancake stuff in his mouth by Roman, which was really good. Um, it was kind of a spot fest, and Roman kind of w gets up, so it clears off the table, puts Xavier Woods through it. That was fun. Again, always hard to argue when someone goes through a pancake laden table, tosses pancakes everywhere. Uh, so the match had to be a restart. Uh, New Day and Daniel Bryan, the ref said, Get out of here! So both teams, uh, match kind of restarted. It was pretty good. <laughs> it was fun. Uh, KO can't, KO can't shoulder tackle Tucker or Otis. And they're too big, and, and Kevin Owens isn't big enough. He did, however, low bridge Tucker, and that allowed, again, some offense to get in. Uh, a KO, again, a standing frog splash. Kevin starts mocking Otis. Otis just goes absolutely bonkers whenever that happens. Uh, Tucker actually hit a, a twist and cross body, which was darn near impressive. I've done that before, so it's impressive. And it's, it's actually pretty hard to do because you actually have to jump up. You have to twist, not flip, and then just hope the guy's there because if not, you're getting crushed. Then Otis hit a running headbutt on Dolph, which looked amazing. Um, does the Caterpillar. Eventually, Kid was tagging himself in. Um, there's always the heel miscue. KO eats the super compactor. And Heavy Machinery wins. So at Extreme Rules, it's going to be the New Day versus Daniel Bryan and Rowan versus Heavy Machinery in a three way tag. So the New Day might win and Heavy Machinery might eat the pinfall. So they could do that. That would be expected because, again, Daniel Bryan and Rowan, they're just champs. Um, well, eventually, towards the end, Dolph eats a stunner. K.O. Kurza, this is my effing show! And then <laughs> he forgot where the hard camera was because someone, so, some production person said, face the hard cam. And then he turned around, yeah! And that was SmackDown. I, I, well, that match again, that was a good match. It's hard to complain. Another cheeseburger match. And I'm doling out cheeseburgers just right and left. Um, so that was SmackDown. Again, an intro. The wrestling was good. Everything else was just kind of filler. So I'll see everyone tomorrow when I do my predictions. Well, when I have Dr. Tom come in to do his prediction videos for Slammiversary. Other than that, everyone else have a good night. Bye.